and the topic as you can see for today is harmonics var and power factor in power systems that are having static converters connected to them just i'll get the arrow back okay okay so harmonics var and power factor in static in power systems with static converters so let's go ahead and see why this is going to be of any interest so because it's a power electronics item so okay so those who are very much new to power electronics either because of their younger age or because who have been working in the industry for long and have not really caught up with power electronics the power electronics briefly deals with the technology that is associated with the conversion control and conditioning of electric power from its available form to the desired electrical form by the application of electronics so you see power electronics systems have an input which is electrical power and an output which is also electrical power if the output is something else then it is an application of power electronics to that particular application area so when we talk about power electronics it deals with the conversion the control and conditioning of electrical power from the input to the output side what are the importance of power electronics the conversion of electrical energy from one form to another of choice so when i say choice that's a very strong word you can choose what the output should be if your input is dc you can make the output ac if your input is ac of a particular frequency you can change the frequency you can change the waveform if your input is a voltage source you can convert it to current source literally whatever juggling you can do you want is possible you can do it with through power electronics so therefore that's why i have mentioned that is conversion of electrical energy from one form to another of your choice it permits a very smooth control of the electrical power flow no tap changing no jumps absolutely smooth high efficiencies are involved in the above processes today we have inverters with efficiencies as high as about 96% very easily because of the several reasons as we'll go ahead and see very high efficiencies are involved very high reliability of the controlling system that means once you have the system put into operation it should go on working for a certain number of years which we specify as the mean time between failures that or in other words mtbf so typical power electronic systems are expected to have an mtbf nothing less than 15 years typically 20 years so it should keep operating for that many years you have a compact size of the controlling system the best example of a compact size is take a look at your mobile phone charger that is a power electronic product classical such chargers would have used a step down 50 hertz transformer a rectifier and a linear voltage regulator to get you the output voltage at the current rating that you desire the entire thing did work it had worked reliably over the years but then the compact size is brought in through the use of power electronics and high frequency switching controlling systems there so they are made very compact size take a look at what a typical power electronic converter is like this is just a uh, shot taken from some application areas and you can see a power electronic converter is not necessarily the small item like a mobile phone charger that i gave the first example a typical power electronic converter which is of concern to us in the power system can be a huge item like this which involves several power semiconductor stacks with the cooling fans at the top it involves a lot of magnetics built into it lot of switch gear lot of controls everything is built into the total system so it's a quite a big complex system why because take a look at some of the solar inverters that we talk about we to have a lot of talk about harnessing the solar energy and it connecting to the grid grid integration of wind power etc so we have power electronic converters there and that is going to look like something like this you have a whole host of combination of stuff built into it to give you the desired output with the desired performance so this is a typical look at a power electronic converter i'm not going to go into the internal details of it because there'll be a maybe a few hundred odd types of internal details so let's not bother about the internal details what we are concerned is what is the effect of the power electronic converters on the power system 
So because I said a power electronic converter converts electrical power from one form to another of the choice, and so one end at least has to be connected to the power supply system, at least one end, because either I am drawing power through my converter from the supply system, which we commonly call as a grid or the mains, from there I may be drawing the power or I may be supplying the power into the grid. Any one end is likely to be connected. Sometimes in some converter systems, we do have both the ends connected. If we had, for example, I'm trying to do a test on a power sys transformer where I feed a power in from one side and take out and don't waste the power and feed it back to the grid, I have a sort of a phantom loading arrangement. Then we can have both the ends connected to the grid. But normally, any one of the ends is connected to the grid, which may be the input or the output side as far as the power flow is concerned. And therefore, we are concerned on what is going to happen to the power system. That's the power grid, the mains, commercial mains, whatever name you call. Why? Why are power electronic systems, first of all, present in the power system? First of all, as high efficiency, they are present as high efficiency power converters to provide suitable power supply from the AC grid to different types of DC and AC loads, including the variable speed drives. So we have a requirement of connection of power converters onto the AC grid, that is our AC mains, because we require DC from the output side for maybe battery charging. All our telecom towers utilize battery as the backup power in case of mains failure. And all these batteries require charging, including our classical landline telephone system, which uses 48 volt DC battery bank universally throughout the world. So they require huge battery banks. Industrial systems require battery banks for backup supply to their con contactors and their logic systems, so that in case of failure, not, the whole industry should not come to a collapse. In, there should be a phased and a controlled turn off. So there are requirements of batteries all over the place. And the batteries have to be charged from the main. So you have rectifiers connected there. You also have converters, a wide variety of smaller converters. For example, the laptop charger is a converter. The projector system is a converter. Today, converters are there in your homes. It has invaded the normal home. Any CFL lamp, compact fluorescent lamp, is a power electronic converter system, giving light as the output. Any LED lamp today is a power electronic system, giving a light output. So it has invaded right into it. Today we have power electronic ceiling fans also. Today we have uh, your brushless DC motor operated fans with electronic regulators. They are power electronic systems. So you think of any application that you have, excluding the pure motors, all the controls and other gadgets, your microwave system, everywhere you look around, you have power electronic converters to provide you the power supply for that. And then a separate category is the variable speed drives, where in the industry, most of the time, we require the variable speed drive to change the speed of the shaft for some reason or to maintain a constant speed in spite of supply variations. The requirement may be either one of them. The first one, as I said, you need to control and change the speed to your need, or you don't need a change. You should maintain it absolutely precision speed. For example, anybody who has been associated with uh, high-speed centrifuges in the, uh, that is the BRC type of applications, uranium centrifuges, they require a very, very precision operation to get the yield out of it. So the speeds have to be very precisely controlled in the such applications. There are a host of applications. Now, the second reason is, so here the power electronic converter was connected mostly trying to draw power from the mains as a load. Second application is that to permit the integration of varying voltage DC sources or varying voltage or frequency AC sources to the fixed frequency, fixed voltage AC grid. So now we are talking of a different application where the power electronic converter is going to supply power into the grid. We have a lot of discussion on distributed generations. We have uh, the solar integration to the grid. We have wind energy integration to the grid. None of this integration was possible without the help of power electronic converters because they are the only one which can convert the varying voltage DC from the solar as an example into the fixed voltage AC in the grid 
or a varying frequency AC from the wind turbine into a fixed frequency, fixed voltage AC supply connected to the grid and maintain the synchronism. So therefore, now comes the era when we are trying to feed power into the grid. And so power electronic converters are again being connected for a different application onto the grid. So we are filling the grid with large numbers of power converters and large power ratings of power converters. The two go side by side. I can talk of a few number of megawatt converters connected to the grid. I can talk of one million numbers of only 100 watt converter connected to the grid. Because each one of these converters, when I talk of one million, they add up together to a huge quantity. So if I have a large number of PC in my lab, the total power that's drawn by all the power supplies of all the PCs add up together onto the power supply. So don't think of it as just a small PC load or just as a small laptop load or just as a small mobile charger. They accumulate and they add on to the power supply. And lastly, they are also the power electronic converters are also used as static system typically for the application of compensation of harmonics or var that may be present on the supply bus so on one side the first one talks about like creating a problem by having a sort of a load type of construction on the power supply the second one is connecting to the power supply and feeding energy and equally creating problem and the third one comes to the rescue as a type of a solution. It's like creating virus and then selling you antivirus to get rid of it. Whatever is the reason. So what are the, why are we concerned? Because power electronics has been there for decades right now. It didn't evolve just yesterday. Why are we concerned? Because newer generation equipment connected to the power supply with microprocessors or microcontrollers DSP or FPGA based controls are more sensitive to power supply variations than those which were used in the past. This is true of general equipment as well as protection systems that are connected to the supply grid. They are sensitive to the than what was used earlier. Next, in order to improve efficiency and performance, the increased use of power electronic interface with the supply system is creating increased disturbances on the latter and has many people concerned about the future impact of system capabilities. That means we are injecting a lot of disturbance into the power supply by connecting the power electronic converters in place where we could have perhaps done with a simple structure. For example, we could have operated a motor at constant speed from the line and from the output of the motor through gear or pulley, belt pulley arrangement, we could have created a variable speed on the shaft, final shaft. But instead of that, we are going in for variable speed drive. So we are trying to achieve some target to that, yes, but in that process, we are creating disturbances. Third one talks about the increasing emphasis on overall power system, efficient and reliable operation has resulted in the need to tackle various unforeseen problems instead of simple problems like application of devices such as filters or shunt capacitors for power factor correction. Classically, the approach was, OK, you require power factor compensation, correction. You put in a few banks of capacitors and do a lot of research. What is the optimum way to connect the capacitors into the line? Switch it on and off, optimum number of capacitors. You do a lot of study, but today it's not more restricted to that. As we'll see later, there are lots of problems in connecting the capacitors into the line today. So overall emphasis has been changing. End users today have an increased awareness of power quality issues and are challenging the utilities to improve the quality of power delivered because of power electronic systems injecting a lot of harmonics into the line. We are unknowingly creating power quality issues and end users are aware of that and are challenging the utility to improve upon the power quality of power that is to be supplied. Power quality issues may involve voltage sag, voltage rise, disturbances on the power line, flicker on the line, etc. Wide range will be there. So it's those that are created by the use of power electronics have to be taken care of. And finally, many things that are now interconnected in a network Integrated processes mean that the failure of any component has much more important consequence because many things are interconnected. So we have to have a safe 
and reliable operation of the entire pass system involving and we can't say that look you don't i'm not going to permit you to connect any more power electronic systems onto the line because there's no substitute for them so far so they have to go on being connected and we have to learn to live with it and take care of the problems and solve so first step in that is to be aware of what is happening then after awareness comes the solution how is power electronics able to tackle the situation through the availability of high power low loss high switching frequency semiconductor devices which were not there the era of thyristor force commutation is gone just like valves nobody uses it anymore today in fact if you want to buy a force commutated thyristor it's just not available for sale anywhere it's obsolete totally so you have to go into the era of the new high frequency high power switching devices through the development of technology permitting high performance high power converters to be built and operated reliably on the power line so there are two aspects to it you are now going into the technology of building high performance high power converters perhaps suitable for connection to the high voltage lines and they should operate reliably on the power lines in spite of natural variations in power quality on the line and third through the availability of high speed real time digital computing systems if the third was not there you would not have been able to put in so much of power electronic converters on the line the third one is a silent it's like the heart it beats inside but is not visible you don't feel it but that's the core essence of all or backbone behind all modern power electronic converter systems high speed real time digital computing systems so let's proceed with the real work and let's see what we have linear loads are those that generates a sinusoidal current waveform when fed from a sinusoidal voltage waveform very simple electrical engineering second year class you have a sine wave you connect it to a cross act sine wave voltage you connect it across a resistance you get a sinusoidal current waveform you connect it through an inductor you had get the same but the angle changes and through a capacitor the same you so this is a elementary case they are linear loads because the currents are sinusoidal examples are resistances unsaturated inductors and capacitors or any of their combination non linear loads are those that generates a non sinusoidal current waveform when fed from a sinusoidal voltage waveform that means even though i am feeding a sine wave voltage to the non linear element the current drawn by the non linear element is non sinusoidal examples are saturated magnetic circuits a diode rectifier etc so you see the semiconductor circuits most of them create are behave like non linear loads because they draw non sinusoidal currents from the input so a non sinusoidal current can always be split into its harmonics we have the knowledge of fourier series we can split a non sinusoidal wave from the first wave from that you see the oscillogram is definitely not sinusoidal it's a non sinusoidal wave form and you can split that wave form into its components interestingly each component will be a sine wave although the overall was never a sine wave each component is a sine wave but at different frequencies and the lowest frequency is the fundamental and the other frequencies are the harmonics so you can split the non sinusoidal current wave form into the fundamental and its harmonics that gives us certain advantage this knowledge gives us certain advantage and we know that the all the equipments that are listed here are affected by harmonics how in a generator if you are trying to draw a lot of power you are normally concerned about the kilowatt that will be supplied by the generator and if you have a lot of harmonics you hit the rms value of the current upper limit quickly without having drawn the full power capability from the generator because the rms value is the limiting concern in terms of internal heating and the rms value in the presence of harmonics will include the effect of the fundamental as well as the harmonics so you have a lot of heating in the generator temperature rises motors not by currents but by voltage if you are trying to impress a non sinusoidal voltage across a motor it will draw non sinusoidal current it will have all types of increased losses involving core loss to i square r loss same thing for the transformers power cables yes additionally dielectric loss is likely to be higher in power cables because of the harmonics 
Capacitors is one of the worst affected things. We will deal with the capacitor aspect later because capacitors just cannot be connected directly across the line as we used to do maybe 20 years back. It's not that easy as we'll see later on. I'll leave it behind for a later on. Electronic equipment connected to the line are definitely going to give wrong readings and wrong performance because of harmonics, either voltage harmonic or current harmonic. Metering systems can malfunction. Switch gear and protecting relaying system can trip earlier. Communication systems can get disturbed. So these are all the disturbances that the harmonics can create in our power line system. To give an example of voltage distortion by nonlinear loads, we take a very simple high school level system of a diode bridge rectifier connected with a capacitor across the output. We all know that the capacitor voltage looks like this, comes down, goes up to the peak, and then discharges, charges, and then discharges, charges, and then discharges. And in this process, the duration for charging is restricted to only this small interval here during which the current from the input flows in, because that's the time the supply voltage is higher than the capacitor voltage and it permits charging. And rest of the time, the supply voltage goes below the capacitor voltage, so it can't charge the capacitor discharges onto the load. In this process, that you notice that the current, because it conducts for a small interval for a given area of current required, the peak has to become large. The area under the current versus time curve is the charge going into the capacitor, and that is the amount of charge which will keep flowing out to the load. So because of that, the charging is a small interval, but with a high current peak. So here I have an oscillogram showing the supply voltage and the charging current of a real life diode rectifier with a capacitor and a resistive load. This is the current flowing in from the AC supply. And you see a flattening of the top of the voltage waveform. It's getting what we call as a, is getting a voltage distortion called as a clipping of the supply simply because there was no current flow till this for this interval. So the voltage drop was not there in the supply. You are looking at the open circuit voltage of the supply. Suddenly there is a large drop created by a large current. So the supply drops down slightly and then everything goes off. So there is a sudden drop in the supply and it will appear as a clipping. So you get a distortion in the voltage. Now this distorted voltage may not affect the rectifier directly, but it's going to affect everything else that it is connected to. For example, if I have 10 PCs in a room, you look at the voltage waveform, it's going to look like this. And then you connect a sophisticated equipment in the room, something which is very critical, for example, a ECG machine, and you may be able to feel some disturbances coming onto the ECG machine because the supply line is carrying this disturbance right through on your sensitive equipment. So that's the concern that we have on a finer scale. And the concern will grow as we put it on a larger in scale in terms of power ratings. So right at the beginning, I'm going into a small, I mean, second year class of what is power factor. In DC circuits, the average power is expressed as the multiplication of DC voltage into the DC current, very simple. So you multiply the DC voltage into DC current, it tells you the power, but it doesn't happen in AC circuit. If you multiply the RMS voltage by RMS current, you don't get the power until you multiply it by another factor. And that factor is the power factor. So the RMS voltage multiplied by RMS current has to be multiplied by one more factor, which is called as a power factor to get the power. And that is why the only definition of power factor is that is a factor by which it is multiplied. And if you take the power factor on the left hand side, this is what you get. That's the definition of power factor. It, it tells you that power factor is equal to total power consumed divided by RMS volts by RMS amps. This is the only definition of power factor. Now we see there are also other types of power definitions that we keep using repeatedly Instantaneous power is small p, average power consumed over a cycle is capital P, apparent power is small, uh, capital S, and reactive power is Q. This is all classical definition that we had. Now, this is a very small maths. I'm not going to go into the maths. I'll just tell you what it deals with. So we try to do this in your second year classes. You take a sinusoidal voltage, 
and a sinusoidal current and both of them have the same frequency please make a note both are sine waves both have the same frequency and let us multiply we are trying to basically find out what is the average power consumed so to find out the average power we express voltage as vm sin omega t we express current as im sin omega t minus theta theta being the angle of displacement multiply them so we get the instantaneous power expression and then find out the average power 1 by t 0 to t integral of small p and you get an expression called as vrms irms cos of theta right no need to do the maths you get that expression we all know it so therefore the power consumed by a sinusoidal current in the presence of a sinusoidal voltage of same frequency is given here so if i go back and substitute that in the uh, expression of power factor so th the denominator was having the power consumed i substituted it by vrms irms cos theta and in the denominator i still have vrms irms so i get power factor has a numerical value of cos theta this is not the definition the whole definition value came big arising out of the simple definition of power factor power consumed by rms volts by rms amps and this is the numerical value when with the voltage and current are both sine waves and they both have the same frequency that is the time you are able to apply it and because it's angle you can talk about lag or lead respect to the positions fine now just as a reminder in three phase when we express the power in three phase we have the expressions of root three v line to line into i l into cos theta where the theta is by no means the angle between the line to line voltage and the current it is not so because when you derived it out it came from the phase so theta is the angle between the phase voltage and the phase current not between the line voltage and line current that will be an error okay now we are dealing with harmonics we are not concerned about that second year uh, example so when we are dealing with harmonics the question arises does the harmonic currents do they consume power let's see we do the same exercise now so i have assumed sinusoidal current with sinusoidal voltage of different frequency both are sine waves but they have different frequencies so my voltage has a particular frequency here the current has a higher frequency because i've considered a harmonic and accordingly it's the nth harmonic i have put n here i do the same exercise once again and to my utter surprise the average power works out to be mathematically zero you can do that at any time and check out the average power works out to be zero so the result is that the average power zero tells me that if there is a harmonic in the current in the presence of a fundamental voltage that harmonic current cannot consume any average power graphically if you multiply these two you will see this positive area is cancelled by this negative area and so on area wise graphically you can also explain that why in a cycle the average value becomes zero so the crux is that in case you have harmonic currents they cannot consume any power from the fundamental supply they just cannot next question may arise what if i have a dc component of current in the ac supply yes we do have we have half wave rectifiers if you have a half wave rectifier remember that the current flows in only one half cycle from the supply it does not flow in the next half cycle so therefore this waveform has only one half cycle and i can split it into a dc component and a ac component so ac component nature we have already studied by now there will be a fundamental which will be consuming power in the presence of the sinusoidal voltage but the harmonics will not be consuming power but the dc component is something we should explore further so if you repeat that same exercise sine wave voltage with multiplied by a dc component of current is just that a sine wave is multiplied by a constant so it becomes a scaled version of a sine wave you don't even have to do the maths you know the average value is zero so even though you have D dc component of current in the supply current you have average power is equal to zero. So what it means is that the RMS current in general case can be expressed as fundamental square, DC square, N1 square, N2 square, et cetera, et cetera. Some of these squares, that's the way it, you define the RMS current in general case. And you'll realize the magnitude becomes much higher than what it would have been for the fundamental alone. 
So in case of non-serious or current in the supply system, the RMS value is larger and the voltage is assumed sinus order, and we know that the average power is consumed only by the fundamental current. This is the only one which is going to consume average power. None of them will consume average power. So therefore, when you substitute in the expression of power factor, you know that the numerator is still given as Vi cos theta, and this will be having VRMS and IRMS, now you realize if it was only fundamental, the numerator would have had the same value, but the denominator would have been smaller. And now because of the presence of harmonics, the denominator has become larger, which means the power factor has reduced. Uh, Shukla is presenting his screen. I don't know why. Uh, please. Uh, sir, your slides are not visible, sir. Uh, yeah, one, one second. Uh, I'm sorry, there is some interruption. Uh, okay, Mr. Okay. Rakesh Ranjan Sukla, he's presenting the screen. Uh, please make it, uh, please mute yourself. I think because of that, the control went to him. That's why the participants could not be able to see the screen for last uh, maybe less than a minute or so. Professor. Yeah, so Professor. Please, now, yes, yes. Please withdraw whoever is showing. Please withdraw the screen sharing. Yeah, now please it is done, Professor. It now is my done, slides are now my slides are visible. I think uh, you, is it, can you can you reshare it, please? Oh yes, yes. Uh, you need to. You need I says I have to reshare it. it. Okay, okay. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. I'll do that. One minute. It is just less than a minute when you are yeah, discussing no that. No yes, yeah. Yes. Uh, yes, Professor. Yeah, I'll just go to the full screen. I'll just go to the full screen yes, sir. and continue. Yeah, yeah. Yes, so I was here. I was talking about the RMS current. In the general case, is IRMS is expressed as root over the fundamental square plus the DC square plus the nth harmonic squares, all the, all the harmonics that are present. So this shows that the RMS value in terms of magnitude is much higher than what would have been for the fundamental alone. So therefore, when we talk about a situation when the voltage is sinusoidal and we have harmonics in the current or even DC components in the far current, we know that the total power is consumed only by the fundamental component of current. So if I substitute that in the expression of power factor, the numerator is going to have a component that's going to be only fundamental voltage, fundamental current into cos of theta, but denominator is going to have only fundamental current. So between the two, if I say that I am going to add the harmonics or even DC component, the uh, RMS value increases, but the numerator does not increase because the harmonics don't contribute to power. So the denominator increases and as a result, the power factor reduces. So therefore, the effect of harmonics and or DC components present in the line current is to reduce the power factor. This power factor has no angle associated with it. It is simply come straight away from the concept of the basic definition of power factor and power factor is going to get reduced. The moment you have, even if you say I have 2% harmonics, the power factor can never be unity because this will be making it lower. This RMS value will increase. So you can't talk of unity power factor anymore. So power factor gets reduced the moment you have harmonics in the line. This is a very interesting concept because the harmonics did not change the numerical value, sorry, the numerator compared to the operation with only fundamental, but your denominator got increased, so your power factor got reduced. So when to take care of that fundamental component, we have defined something as called as the displacement factor, which is defined as DF or sometimes this displacement power factor, which is cos theta one, where theta one is the angle between the fundamental voltage, rather the sinusoidal supply voltage and the fundamental current. That both being sine waves, now you can define angle and cos of that angle is called as displacement factor. So therefore, in the presence of harmonics, 
you may have a displacement factor which is unity yet power factor may be less than one that means i have a non sinusoidal waveform the fundamental current component is in phase with the voltage so i have displacement factor equal to unity but because i have harmonics the power factor is going to be less than unity so this is something very important which we should appreciate today now what is the amount of power flow due to harmonics how do you take in that into account capital p was our classical active power capital s was our apparent power and q was our classical reactive power which was classically all due to sine wave components today in order to maintain the same definition of q it is still maintained as v1 i1 sin theta 1 so harmonic effect is not taken into reactive power although it does not consume power so a new terminology has been defined which is called as the distortion power and the effect of the harmonics is taken into the redefining s as s square which was earlier defined as only p square plus q square is today defined as p square plus q square plus d square where d is the contribution coming from the harmonics d standing for distortion so this is how the harmonic effect is taken into account into the power system and the power factor now if i go ahead with the contribution of fundamental and harmonics on power factor still one more step further we can show that the power factor really is comprising of two distinct components arising one from the fundamental and another for the harmonics so with this say start with the earlier definition total power consumed by vrms rm irms so i have put v1 i1 cos theta 1 and v1 irms because there is a harmonic in the line power is still consumed by fundamental so you find this comes down to this is sinusoidal voltage so there is only one voltage no harmonics in the voltage that was the assumption and this becomes i1 by irms cos theta 1 and cos theta 1 you already know is the displacement factor so the term i1 by i rms comes from the harmonic currents okay if i rms is equal to i1 that becomes unity if you would see so this term contributes to the harmonic effect and the cos theta 1 term contributes to the fundamental displacement that is taking place so we can rewrite it in terms of total harmonic distortion of the current i'm not going into the details of the maths and if i rewrite it i can write cos theta is equal to displacement factor divided by a term that involves a total harmonic distortion so now you can clearly see total power factor will be reduced either if cos theta 1 is reduced that means the fundamental keeps lagging or leading excessively or if i have more total harmonic distortions in the numerator that means i add harmonic currents into the system so both ways the power factor is going to get degraded and each one will have its own unique contribution into the system now we can have real life systems how does voltage harmonics come in because so far i have assumed voltage was perfectly sinusoidal consider a source generating sinusoidal voltages and there is a total lump impedance representing the impedance of the generator the transmission line the transformers etc and i have a bus so somebody has a non linear load connected to the bus and he is drawing non sinusoidal currents from the source that's the only way the power can come through so the non sinusoidal current including the harmonics flows in this path and this impedance will now have a non sinusoidal voltage drop because of the non sinusoidal current so earlier if it was a pure sine wave a sine wave source multiplied by uh, sorry subtract from that if you subtract another sinusoidal power drop you still get a sine wave that is one sine wave subtracted from another sine wave is a sine wave but now a distorted or a non sinusoidal voltage drop subtracted from a sine wave creates a distorted voltage here so the bus voltage becomes distorted and everybody else who is connected on the bus sees now a distorted voltage on the bus and because you have a distorted bus even a resistive load connected here will start drawing power because now you have a voltage distortion in the resistive load you the current will also be distorted so you have the same harmonics in both of them maybe there is a fifth harmonic on the bus voltage and you have a fifth harmonic in the load current they will combine together to draw power because in the first derivation i had shown 
that in case both the sine waves had the same frequency, then active power would be drawn on an average basis. So you can reapply it here for the harmonics. They will draw power. Now, if there is a component, that is what I said. OK, this slide just tells about the same thing. If there is a component of voltage for a corresponding component of current of the same frequency, then these components also consume average power. Now we come to, we have discussed all what is going on. What is the solution to the harmonic? We had converters that were connected to the line, and they were drawing harmonic currents. As an example, I showed you a diode rectifier. What is the solution? Number one solution is add a passive filter, some sort of a LC filter. Second is change the topology. Third is it should have been, sorry, a power, active power filter. It should have been an active power filter. Let's talk about filters. So if I have a converter on the right hand side and this is a supply side, I can put a series tuned harmonic filter across the line. This L and C is tuned to a particular harmonic. It's a series tuned system but connected in parallel and L2 is really not a part of the filter. For the time being, just forget about the presence of L2. We'll see later on. So L1 and C1 being tuned at the nth harmonic implies this relationship and at the nth harmonic impedance is zero. So the shunt impedance is zero. So any harmonic that is drawn by the load has two alternative paths to flow. One is to flow through the zero impedance locally or to flow back into the source through the reactance of the source, which would now be n times larger at the nth harmonic. So obvious answer is the harmonics will try to find a path through this lower impedance here, rather than try to flow back through a large reactance n times larger than the fundamental. It is a local path, so it will flow through this, which means the harmonic current will no more be present in the line. So you have effectively filtered out the line. Another interesting aspect is that if you make this tuned circuit to the nth harmonic, you can work backwards and see that at fundamental, the in behavior is like a capacitance. That's true for any series uh, LC circuit that is tuned at a higher frequency. It will behave as a capacitor at lower frequency and will behave as an inductor at higher than the tuned frequency. So at fundamental, it behaves like a capacitor. Effective value of capacitor is like this. Fine, so we have been able to filter it out. Why do we need L2? L2 is required for a different reason. If I go back, <coughs> sorry, if I go back to my earlier slide, that I have a sensitive, uh, this person, nonlinear load, he has put a uh, filter here, a shunt connected series tuned filter here to filter out his harmonics, good. But there are neighbors to him who are also injecting harmonics. So that's why I have also put it as a customer's connection. So his next door neighbor may be injecting harmonics. So the harmonics injected by his neighbor has now again two paths. One is to flow back into the source through a n times larger reactance or to flow into this person's premises and flow through the low impedance path that he has provided in his premises. Obviously, the answer is the harmonics will now flow into this person's premises and through the low impedance path. So now you see all that current will enter through the metering system of this person, flow through his filter and out, and it will create a higher RMS current on the line. It will also create higher currents through the capacitors that he has been using for his filter, and therefore he must block this so-called import of harmonics. So this L2 inductance is to prevent the import of harmonics from outside. That means from the outside, if one looks at the system, it is no more a tuned circuit because now the circuit has L1 plus L2 and C. So it is no more tuned at the same harmonic frequency. It's detuned. So the chances of external harmonic trying to flow into this person's premises is minimized. So L2 is not really a part of his filter, but to prevent somebody else's harmonic current to flow into this low impedance path. So therefore, he has to protect himself through this process. An alternative method of connecting a filter is to connect a parallel tuned filter in series. We know that if the L and C are tuned in parallel, then they offer an infinite impedance theoretically to that. So the harmonic currents cannot flow into the line anymore. So the line is free of harmonic currents and the currents will flow through the local capacitor, which is provided here. The problem is this LC tuned circuit will behave as an inductor at the fundamental frequency at 
lower frequency. So therefore, you have large magnitude of fundamental voltage drop created in the inductor due to the fundamental current flowing. So this is only at the nth harmonic for one harmonic frequency. If you want to do it for a larger number of harmonics, say fifth, seventh, etc., and in general for three phase, each phase must have one such tank of or bank of filter. If it is a shunt connected filter, one for fifth, one for seventh, and so on. And if it is a series connected, one for fifth, one for seventh, one for other harmonics, so on. So you see in the series connected method, the total fundamental voltage drop can be substantially large, which may be unacceptable. But in the shunt connected, you don't have a series drop, except yes, you do a little bit drop is there because of the L2 inductance, which can be made smaller. So that is why this circuit is very much preferred compared to the series uh, connected parallel tune filter. Now let's go back and see what else is the effect of putting such filters on the line. As I repeat here, this whole network behaves like a capacitor. And we will see later on that the same thing you do, you connect capacitors across the line whenever you have a power factor problem. You want to improve upon the voltage regulation, so you compute out what is the amount of capacitor required and connect them across the lines. Or even locally within an industry, you have some power problem with the power factor because the power factor as measured by the utility works out to be very, very poor. So immediate solution you is you put in some capacitor banks. That does not solve the problem. It creates more problems than what you had anticipated. Let's see. This is my sinusoidal voltage source with the source side equivalent reactance. This is the point of copper coupling. This is the supply side current. This was my harmonic source within my premises. This is a resistive load connected here. The harmonic source I have shown backwards, like it's injecting a current backwards into the supply. And this is a, this is created a distorted voltage. So the resistive load also has some harmonic current drawn by itself. Fine, this is a typical situation that we have. And because of the harmonic current flowing backwards, the power factor has become degraded at the point of common coupling. So very good, we have a idea that we connect a capacitor across the lines to improve the power factor. And let's see what happens. So I connect a capacitor across the line to apparently improve the cap power factor. Or I might have put the filter also here, which behaves as a capacitor. So this is the situation. I have a source current. I have a capacitor here. I have a harmonic source and the resistance. Let's take a look at the equivalent circuit of this once again. This is your network once again. Now, because I am looking at the kth harmonic frequency, I need not look at the fundamental. That means I'm going to apply superposition theorem through this network. First analyze, one process of analyzing will be with the fundamental frequency. And the second analysis will be for the kth harmonic frequency. So I can have multiple networks for applying in superposition theorem. Now I'm concerned about the kth harmonic frequency. I'll tell you what is kth harmonic. So at the kth harmonic frequency, there is no fundamental voltage. I have a reactance, which is k times omega ls. The harmonic source is already here, nth harmonic. This is sending the harmonic current into the supply side. This is the Vn, the voltage created across the source. nth harmonic voltage, this is the load. And I have connected a capacitor here across the line, which I did earlier. Okay, this was the capacitor. Now, reactance of the capacitor is 1 by k times omega 1c. If I redraw this circuit at, as shown here on the right hand side, and by chance there is a resonance at kth harmonic, if first redraw the circuit, you will understand that the inductor is in parallel to the capacitor. Which inductor and which capacitor? The capacitor that I have put across the line as my power factor solution or harmonic solution, that is the same capacitor across the line. And this reactance is the source reactance at the kth harmonic. If by chance they go into parallel resonance, take a look what happens. At parallel resonance, you'll find that IN remains same because that was the harmonic source which was created. This is still the same. IRN is same. But now what happens is due to resonance, the currents would be very large amongst themselves and the summation would be zero they would not get reflected on either one of the components. 
so it will be circulating within themselves so i can have a large magnitude of in current through my inductor and a large magnitude of current through the capacitor without affecting elsewhere what does isn becoming large mean it means that the source current has become very very large due to resonance and that means going back into the network it means the source current going out becomes very large in terms of harmonics so by putting a capacitor actually i have increased the amount of harmonic current that is circulating between the source and my capacitor so instead of solving problems it creates a new area of problem for me and the power factor can never be improved because the more capacitor you put in there the more chances of drawing in more and more harmonics so you are not getting any solution higher amount of harmonics here means your power factor is degraded it is never going to be unity so that's a eternal problem so to solve the problem the first solution is to get rid of this capacitor that's the best you can do just get rid of the capacitor so resonances will stop your harmonic currents will come down i have done it in the industry i know it works it comes down putting a capacitor creates more problem but then there is still a fundamental displacement angle that i have to take care and i can't do it with simple capacitor i will do it with electronic control later on as we'll see so now going back into my earlier uh, explanations that i was saying change the topology first we have talked about filters then go ahead with change in topology so when we are talking about changes in topology this was your classical diode rectifier we know it's not good enough because it draws a lot of harmonic currents we have passive techniques this is called as a valley fill capacitor type so modify the type of capacitor connection that you are doing modify split the capacitor into two modify it through to additional diodes and you will find the capacitor voltage becomes something like this vm to half of vm vm to half vm it improves upon the power factor because it improves upon the wave shape gives you less harmonic content at the input and this is a very popular network which is used in all cfl lamps inside it because it's very cheap simple solution but it is not good for high power applications we also have a solution where if you have a large inductance on the dc bus the harmonics are restricted is still not excellent but okay you have a control over the harmonics that still restricted is a defined set of harmonics it's not an undefined harmonics people have had tapped inductor structures where the current becomes more or less stepped wave form you do get certain advantage in terms of harmonics and the worst example that i am selecting right now is a phase control rectifier where we know for a three phase phase control rectifier the current wave form looks like this ideally a rectangular 120 degree conduction wave form and <clears throat> which is shifted from the zero crossing of the voltage by the phase shift angle so therefore this current wave form does have a lot of harmonics typically this wave form is going to have 33% harmonics 33% total harmonic distortion plus the fundamental is displaced so it also has a poor displacement factor so it's a double effect the power factor in this case is going to get degraded in the case of phase control rectifiers firstly because of harmonics secondly because of displacement angle so that is why the use of phase control rectifiers is on the decline unless it is absolutely necessary because phase control rectifiers at large power ratings are still the workhorse of the industry because they work they are easy to design they work reliably very rarely will a scr fail sorry i just took a swipe of water okay very rarely a scr fail so they are very reliable but today have better technologies are catching on so less than about 10 kilowatts the phase control rectifier is almost out today we have pwm converters using igbts or mosfets whatsoever coming in the lower power range they are filling up that lower power rating they are not filling up the higher power because it's a economical constraint they have to prove themselves economically viable at high power so that's the only reason they are held back at the moment i use the word held back the day they will be able to become economically feasible competitive with thyristor converters they will make that whole technology totally obsolete okay so this has a double problem here part of the problem can be solved by multi pulse rectifiers yes although they have the circuit i have shown are with diodes we have thyristors here 
So we do have a lot of today. Large power rectifiers are invariably going to be 12 pulse, 18 pulse, 24 pulse systems. Higher than 24 pulse is useless because it really does not give any benefit physically when you do it in your lab. Yes, you will get benefits on your MATLAB simulation. Yes, you will get benefits when you do in real life. It doesn't give a benefit because supply line voltages in real life are never balanced. So when you make a rectifier, the, all your analysis that the output in a six pulse, the output, the lowest frequency component in 50 hertz is going to be 300 hertz, is valid only when the supply system magnitudes are balanced. If one single voltage has a higher magnitude or a lower magnitude, you will get a 100 hertz ripple on the output side because the output will become modulated corresponding to that voltage. So you, the, you cannot work as per mathematical or MATLAB simulations in real life. You don't get that benefit. So more than 24 pulse systems are not in use anywhere. Now we come to VAR. What is VAR? So of course, we know VA, RMS volts into RMS amps. And true power, of course, we know for sinusoidal waveform, it's VA into cos of theta. Otherwise, it's VA into power factor. And reactive power, which we have just a few minutes back, we have said, is exclusively due to the fundamental components of VA. Uh, VR, reactive power, shall be VA into sine of theta. Exclusively due to sine theta, the harmonic is not going to account into the VAR system. So what is the nature of VAR? I have taken an example where the voltage is in red and the green is the current and intentionally they are displaced by 90. So if you do the multiplication of voltage into current graphically, you find you get the blue waveform, which is another frequency uh, sinusoidal component, but of double the frequency. And within a uh, full cycle, if you take the average value, you find it's zero. So this little blue sine wave, which represents reactive power, is having a zero average voltage because the half cycles cancel. So, but the current is physically existing at almost all the instants except the zero crossings. Therefore, the line current is physically made higher by the presence of reactive power than what would have been for active power alone. That means you have an increase in line current unnecessarily because of the reactive power, which you don't need. What are the impacts? Or what are the characteristics of VAR? It refers to the circulating power in the system that does no useful work. It is generated by the energy storage systems connected to the power system, it should have read, like inductors, capacitors, and nonlinear loads. And it has a strong effect on system voltage. Okay. So what happens is, this reactive power is not in our control. It is decided by the load. So therefore, even though I have an inverter system, the load is not in my control and the load can be lagging or leading and it will draw VAR accordingly. And there has to be a provision for catering to this VAR. And if the inverter output is uh, loaded up to the rated current, because, including the VAR, that means I am not able to supply the required active power that I could have. So if I take a case of a solar inverter example, I have a solar inverter. If the output current is having a lot of VAR into it and the current reaches the maximum RMS value, I cannot supply any more RMS current through that due to the power limitation. That means I am not still able to supply the maximum power I could have. So there is a restriction on that. I can give you drastic examples of how what VAR affects. Take the case of a Rajdhani Express where we have a diesel generator on the last uh, compartment and the diesel generator generates all the power that is required to electrify all the coaches. It does not draw power from the overhead uh, until recently. So that diesel generator is capable of delivering kilowatts. But because of the VAR loading on the coaches, we run perhaps 15 coaches only on that local Rajdhani Express. Now, well, the engine can draw the 16th coach, but if I connect the 16th coach, the additional power required is likely to exceed the total current capability. But if I am able to make the power factor unity, I can add the 16th coach and the same diesel generator will keep supplying the 16th coach power. So this is an example which you can appreciate in a captive power domain rather than the infinite grid the real benefits of 
improving power factor and the effect of harmonics. Now, we go on why power electronics is applied to the control of harmonics and VAR. We apply power electronics. I said, okay, this should have been uh, preceded by, I could not do it by capacitor. So I go for power electronics. So to compensate for the harmonic currents generated by the nonlinear load, that's one aspect. The ability to supply leading as well as lagging VAR, smooth stepless operation, high speed compensation, no moving parts, and high efficiency of the compensator. Now the overall, now we are going to take a combined approach into the converter modification. That means we are trying to go in for a converter which will have in minimum harmonics and minimum displacement. So perhaps we can compromise with something waveform like this, which looks like a sine wave, has the same zero crossing as the voltage and has a sinusoidal envelope with minimum amount of harmonics. And those harmonics are going to be high frequency harmonics. So I'll modify my statement and say very little amount of lower order harmonics will be present. If I am able to create this sort of a current, I have achieved almost a large extent of what I wanted. This whole story started with the active power factor technology. When people were not happy with the diode rectifier with the capacitor, they've connected a boost converter into it and started controlling the current of the boost converter such that you see here there is a short circuit. So what people did was created a template of the sine wave, which was drawn from the sinusoidal voltage. So the dotted line is the template. That's the nature of the current that I want. That is my preferred current. And the actual current is the haphazard one that goes right through. So when you close the switch here, the supply is shorted through the inductor. So the current builds up. And you have a detection system here for the current that the current is deviating too much from the envelope. So you shut off the switch. The stored energy in the inductor gives a kick and sends the energy out to the capacitor. So the current comes down. Again, you sense that the current has become much lower than what is permissible. You close the switch and therefore on and off, on and off, that's the way you do it. You keep switching. So the current through the inductor keeps building up and coming down. And the overall current on the input side will follow this sort of envelope. And the actual current through the inductor will be the rectified version of this. Actually, there'll be one more hump here on the inductor. But on the AC side, you'll get the pure AC waveform. So in this waveform, you can see displacement factor is unity. Yes, because the fundamental zero crossing is matching with the voltage and the total harmonic distortion is low. So therefore, I can hope that the power factor is near unity, maybe 0.9, maybe 0.99. That is what I can achieve through the switching process. So this became one of the most popular techniques to actually improve the power factor and has expanded thereafter onto other types of converter systems that all we use today. From that evolved the bidirectional active power factor connected converter, where the same topology was slightly twisted and turned around to shift the inductor from the DC bus onto the AC line and <coughs> put four switches across each one of those diodes. You can do the same function right now. If it's a positive half cycle, if the top is positive, you close switch S4 to create a short circuit. Then you see the current flows from the supply through this, through switch S4, through the diode D2, and back into the supply. So you have a short circuit created, current builds up in the inductor for a while. And once you open switch S4, the trapped energy flows out through this diode to the DC circuit and back again here. So you have the same performance that you had in the earlier case using switch S4 for the positive half cycle. You will do the same thing for the negative half cycle using switch S2. So you get back what you wanted there. Your current waveform will still look something like this. That depth of this modulation again depends on the switching time that you permit the value of inductors that you put there. So it's possible for you to reduce that. So you get back this waveform. The question is what are you doing with four switches whereas you could have done it with two only. The answer lies in the first word, it's a bidirectional active power factor corrected converter. Why? If you look at it carefully, if I put a DC source here, like a battery on this side, this structure is identical to an inverter. And from the DC, I can create a pulse width modulated AC waveform at the output terminals. And that, like a synchronous mode generator, can be synchronized to the AC supply utilizing the series inductance. Then the series inductance will behave like the synchronous reactance in a synchronous generator. 
and you can connect this to the supply with the proper phase angle of course considering the fundamental only because we know by now the harmonic flow in this cannot contribute to any power flow the harmonic circulation is going to be kept at the minimum by suitable choice of the inductance value and on the other hand if you want the power to flow from the dc ac to dc then this will act like your rectifier system and using the similar switching pattern on the current waveform you get a rectified dc the only catch is that the dc voltage has to be higher than the highest peak of the supply voltage such that the four diodes are naturally reverse biased otherwise if they are, they are not done so they will come back to their normal operation and will distort the input current so the dc bus has to be kept higher than the peak of the highest input supply so that their diodes will never be naturally forward biased so with this we get a control over the input current wave shape that is the vital aspect that we have talked about and this is the ac side pwm waveform that you create whether it's a converter is acting as a rectifier or acting as an inverter and this is the ac side current waveform that you had you can see it's nearly sinusoidal you can have three phase structures created similarly and let's move ahead the control involves the dc bus control because the current magnitude control is through the dc bus you have sinusoidal pulses modulation or space vector modulation to control the waveforms and the currents this is what a current typically looks like at the input of one of those pwm converters and if you put a little filter the current becomes very very smooth from the supply side this is the actual input to the converter and this is what happens after putting a small filter this is the current drawn from the supply so you can see it's really near sinusoidal waveform the principle of operation of the bidirectional converter can be understood very simply from the phasor diagram if this is the supply grid and this is my dc side if i want to send power from the ac side to the dc side on this side then i have an inverter here which creates a fundamental voltage of e and the grid side voltage is v and if i want unity power factor operation or unity rather i should modify and say unity displacement factor operation the current drawn should be in phase with v which means the reactive drop should be vertically upwards in the reinductance reactance and thus this tells you about the magnitude and the phase position of e that you have to create so you have to have a phase lock loop created from the terminal voltage v and control the pwm pattern by shifting it and pulse width modulation such that the fundamental voltage created here is like this you will have a constant current flow in this process if you are going to have an inversion operation where the power should flow from the dc bus onto the ac side then the current phasor will be in 180 degrees with the supply voltage and the system phasor diagram is as shown where the voltage will swing to the lower half and you will still get the angle and the magnitude that you need now interesting aspect is there are conditions in this bidirectional converter when there is no exchange of average power on the dc side condition number 1 is when the ac supply voltage is sinusoidal and current is sinusoidal of same frequency but displaced by 90 degrees i didn't say lag or lead if your template is such that your template which you use here let's go back to the circuit and try to understand the template here you had used a template which the current was forced to follow if this template is displaced by 90 either lag or lead then you have a current created at the input which has a fundamental component which is also going to be displaced by 90 degrees if the fundamental is displaced by 90 with respect to the voltage you know that the power exchange is zero active power is zero at the same time there is one more condition when the supply voltage is sinusoidal and the current is sinusoidal but at harmonic frequency so if your template was following a harmonic frequency intentionally then also there will be no exchange of power because you have already done the maths there is no exchange of power so if there is no exchange of power in that converter you do not need any source of energy on the dc side and a simple capacitor charged up to the requisite dc voltage is sufficient for the operation neglecting circuit losses so you don't need any constant source of energy you just charge up the capacitor it maintains the voltage and because the there is no power flow the capacitor doesn't get overcharged or discharged in real life it doesn't happen like that 
So in real life, you maintain a little phase shift of the supply current so that you provide the charging current to the capacitor to compensate for its discharge or you provide a discharging current to compensate for the overcharge. A little bit of current is sufficient, little phase shift is sufficient to do that trick. Now, when we talked about filters earlier, coming back to that, we had shunt filters, we had series filters, and combinations would have been hybrid filters. They were under passive filters. We also have a category called as active power filters, below which we normally have the shunt. We normally don't use the series. And you can have hybrid filter here, which means combination of these two. So the question is, what is an active power filter? We use the same power topology as I have discussed here to do that. OK, so same topology is going to be used. Let us say this is the supply, my old schematic with the source impedance, the bus. And the load is here, which is generating harmonics. Sorry, uh, maybe I eliminate that, yes. And this load is drawing a distorted current. So because of the distorted current, this bus is getting distorted. Although the generation is perfectly sinusoidal, this is distorted. So I want to filter it out. If I put passive filters, there is a chance of resonance, as I have shown. Now, this technique is an active power filter. So I use this circuit here, connected across the lines, and control the template such a way that the template is the same template I have derived from the harmonic current. So what I do is analyze the current drawn by the load under normal conditions. Here, whatever is the current, there is a fundamental. I forget about that. I take the current as a template, use it for creating the same currents at the input side, but 180 degree out of phase, such that at the node, they sum up to each other and the current ceases to be drawn from the input side. Then what happens? The input current becomes sinusoidal once again, and you're drawing only fundamental current from the supply. All the harmonic current drawn by this is supplied in the parallel shunt connected active power filter, and therefore you have cleaned the input current. So this is called as the active power filter. And it is not connecting any physical L or C across the line. Hence, it is free from resonance of the system. This is an example of active power filter. Here you find the actual diode rectifier with inductive load current waveform, IA, okay, the actual current. And this, uh, there was the supply voltage distortion. This is the... ICA, the compensating current which is being provided by the active power filter, and the total current you can see has become nearly sinusoidal. ISA has become quite good compared to what it was earlier. So it provides a filtering effect. Now we know VAR compensators can also have been made by using fixed capacitors banks, which have resonant problems plus fixed capacitor banks are practically useless because the load may be changing. So you have to keep changing the capacitors unless you have a capacitor for one fixed motor when it's OK, perfectly all right. We also have used classically synchronous condensers, which are synchronous machines with overexcitation. Uh, no load, they are running because you, the advantage was you could adjust the amount of VAR through the adjustment of field current. Today, we bring in new solid state devices like distribution static compensators, DSTATCOMs. So, DSTATCOM is a reactive power compensation, which is a shunt connected system. We use the same structure as we had studied earlier. And because it's going to provide reactive power compensation, there is no need of energy storage. You connect a capacitor only on the DC bus. If it charges up, it will maintain the operation. And its operation is just to maintain a current from the output which will always be 90 degree displaced to the voltage. And the magnitude of that current is to be controlled through the PWM process. Therefore, this can behave either as a phys as a equivalent to an inductor or a capacitor without the need for connecting any physical inductors or capacitors on the line, because it is only injecting a current which will be at 90 degrees to the supply voltage. It will behave as an equivalent capacitor or inductor. OK, you don't need any physical capacitor on the line, so there is no chance of resonance on the line. That's why these stats comes are getting popular. The only inhibition is the cost of the system. It's quite expensive. Second inhibition is today with the existing commercial IGBTs, we cannot build systems with uh, operation at more than 400 volts line, considering that 20 percent 
um, uh, tolerance of the supply line. So they are restricted to distribution applications, and that's why they are destat comps today. We can't connect them on the main lines anymore. Okay. There is also a possibility of series compensation of lines. When you have too much of drop in the line due to the large line inductances, conventionally people have been using thyristors to cut in or cut out series capacitors. And they can be replaced by DVRs, dynamic voltage regulators, who provide series compensation of the line by injecting reactive voltage drops in line to compensate for the voltage drops in the line. If you have a UPQC, Unified Power Co Compensator, Power Quality Compensator, it's a combination of DSTAT, common DVR. They share the same bus, <clears throat> which means both functions are integrated into the same power circuit and there is no separate power requirement on the DC bus. Last but not the least is the thyristor control reactor, which is to be used. The thyristor control reactor is an important subset of static bar compensators and is used in conjunction of thyristor switch capacitors to achieve power factor correction. Uh, incidentally, it is also employed to restrain overvoltage phenomena during light load condition of a network. So this is how the thyristor control reactor operates. You have a reactor with a back-to-back -back connected thyristors and you exercise phase control through it. Nothing happens till 90 degrees because the thyristors will conduct and the current through an ideal inductor lags by 90 degrees. But once you start delaying the phase angle beyond 90, you find that the current gets delayed beyond 90, starts with a zero interval, builds up, comes down and drops off earlier because of lower energy content here. It drops off earlier to the next 90 peak. So you start creating gaps in between and these are symmetrical waveforms. Because the area content starts reducing, you can say that the reactance is effectively increased due to firing angle control. So that is how you have a principle, the operation of thyristor controlled reactor. So the reactor starts behaving as a variable inductor, variable reactor. Okay. So, but the current flowing through it is not sinusoidal. It is absolutely non-sinusoidal. It contains some harmonics, a lot of harmonics are there. And this is how static bar compensators operate. So you have perhaps in my example, three banks of capacitors and one bank of TCR. So the thyristor switch capacitors brings in compensation in steps and the function of the TCR is to fill up that step. For example, if you have a requirement that let's say the first TSC is 10 microfarads and the next TSC is 20 microfarads. So fine, but you have a requirement of let's say the 15 microfarad compensation. You don't have any 15 microfarad capacitors here. So what you do is you bring in 20 microfarads of equivalent capacitor compensation and bring in the reactor such that the reactor compensates for five microfarad provided here. It cuts away, it cancels by virtue of reactive power. This was capacitive VAR, this is reactive VAR. So if you compensate away for five, the capacitor bank along with the TCR overall will behave like a 15 microfarad capacitor connected across the line. That's how we adjust it. So it's possible to do smooth adjustment. The problem was that the TCR was injecting current harmonics into the line. Classically, people use delta connected networks across the line to resolve the problem of zero sequence currents flowing inside the delta connection. But still, we had a lot of fifth harmonic and seventh harmonic currents injected into the line. And that problem has been persisting for decades. So you have a large amount of fifth harmonic, as you can see, going up up to 7% is injected, which is violating IEEE 519. So there was restricted operation, whereas the main advantage of your thyristor control reactor in the static bar compensator was that it could be connected directly to a high voltage line, unlike your stat comp, because SCRs are available in large power ratings and we create HVDC using SCR valve. So there is a very large application of this and you remember every time there is a HVDC station being built because of the lagging VAR drawn by the phase control philosophy, the technology that is used, you have to use a static VAR compensator with every thyristor phase control bank at every end of the HVDC. So there is a large requirement for a static VAR compensator. 
So what we found then is if we go into some modified technology, perhaps we can reduce the harmonic. There is already a standard technology in textbook, which is called as the 12 pulse TCR, where the transformer has a star connection on the primary and a star and a delta on secondary. So the harmonics created by these go through 30 degree phase shift and are nullified. So fifth harmonic and seventh harmonics are nullified. The 11th and 13th remain, but anyway, they are less in magnitude. So they are not of much concern. As you can see, uh, they are less than 3% roughly. So if I can eliminate the fifth and seventh, that is good. So what we did is we went in for a new technology where we had a delta connected network and a star connected network here. And we use the artificial neutral through a zigzag connected transformer, which provides very low impedance for all the zero sequence components, the third harmonic components. And the third harmonic current circulated within this cell did not go to the line. It provided perfect cancellation of fifth and seventh harmonics on the line without the use of any isolation transformer. The main drawback here is for 100 kVR on each bank, you need a 200 kVR transformer. Here in our technology, there is no transformer required except for a zigzag transformer, which has a very low, it's auto transformer, bare carrying only the zero sequence current, so very low VA rating. And this had provided us advantage, like this was the conventional delta connected scheme harmonics. You can see THD of the current. And the black one, sorry, the blue one was the 12 pulse scheme, and the black one was our scheme. So it followed almost the 12 pulse scheme until the lower ends it shot up, but it remained below the delta connected scheme. So this was a new contribution that we had. The individual bank currents look very, very distorted, but the total current uh, for a particular firing angle looks near sinusoidal, less than 5% THD. That is what we have achieved due to lack of time. I'm just skipping some of them. We also then thought of getting rid of that zigzag connected transformer for the static bar compensator. And we landed up with a surprising discovery that if we could have two banks with a ratio of two is to three, then the harmonics get canceled. So one bank was having 60% of the total VAR capacity. Second bank was having 40%. One is in Delta with phase control, phase uh, switches. The other may be star or in Delta, but will have line switches. The harmonics generated get canceled and we get similar results here. So this is conventional. This is the 12 pulse and this is the black one is our new scheme 6040, where you don't require any isolation transform. Excellent current waveforms that we get from the output side. Then we went in for increasing the range of the operation, which I can skip at the moment, forget about it. We brought in new concepts there. And I think that's about all. We have four publications on ITV transaction in transactions on these uh, thyristor control uh, reactors and i think we have taken a lot of time for you i'd like to bring the matter to an end for ready for any questions from your side thank you yeah thank you professor Sujit. it was thank you thank you very much in fact uh, the talk has started where from very fundamentals from our uh, what we studied in our school that uh, diode bridge rectifiers and you know it went on with the mathematical analysis and the harmonics uh, and finally we discussed the, the fax devices and including the d stat comes and uh, even uh, even though you said that you make it uh, no you will not touch the research portion but we are delighted and we have seen that some research components at the end we are very much happy and in fact personally i really enjoyed your talk right from the beginning entire entire talk uh, I believe our participants also enjoyed that uh, talk. Yeah, uh, we have a few questions uh, uh, from the participants. Um, uh, I'll, I'll just uh, read out those uh, questions one by one. Um, yeah. The first question is, uh, what is the difference between current harmonics and the voltage harmonics? Okay, that's a simple one. If you have a distortion on the voltage, then we can express it in terms of a fundamental voltage and harmonics on the voltage. And if the voltage is perfectly sinusoidal, then we don't have any harmonics or distortions, but still you can have harmonics on the current 
which are caused by the nonlinear loads. So it's yeah. just a question of the harmonics being on the voltage or on the current. So why forced commutation of SCR have been obsolete? Ah, okay, because um, <laughs> to create forced commutation, most of the time, we you need uh, some additional auxiliary equipment in the form of typically inductances, capacitors, auxiliary devices, and lot of energy is circulated within such circuits, leading to power losses. So therefore, you cannot match the efficiencies we get with IGBTs. Number one, number two is even with force commutation, the turn of time of those SCRs were around. 15 microseconds each, 1, 5, 15 microseconds each, even with all such things. And therefore, they are in no match with the high speed devices we have today. So we could not go into high frequency switchings with the SCRs. Third thing is, even if I had a good commutation circuit in force commutation, I have just triggered a SCR. See, the latching feature of the SCR is one of its devil hidden behind it. It's one of its worst enemies. That is, if I have just triggered the SCR right now, I have performed the commutation. Good, my commutation circuit has done the commutation. The energy is still getting back into my commutation circuit to be ready for the next commutation. Within that, if there is a disturbance created that triggers the SCR, it will turn on and go into latching mode. And I cannot turn it off because my commutation circuit is not ready to turn it off. You are in a fix, it's a short circuit. Whereas our modern devices, they do not, are not latching. So we are beneficial in a way that only when the, even if a spurious pulse comes to our modern devices, it will turn on for that few nanoseconds or microsecond. Once that pulse disappears, the whole device turns off automatically by itself. It does not get into latching. So that, that is what you have to appreciate. Latching was one of the uh, devil in disguise for the thyristor. Everybody tells yeah, latching is yeah, excellent, yeah. but it's not so. Yes, sorry. That is basically the fully controlled switches. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, another question is how to calculate distortion factor? Ah, that you get meters or you calculate from the basic uh, expressions. You do get power analyzers, power quality equipment. They provide you with everything on the, on the site. Otherwise, if you are simulating on your MATLAB or so, you just write it in terms of the formulae. Formula is available in the standard textbook distortion factor. It involves the harmonics and the fundamental, basically, the quantity. It's a question of to what harmonic you will take. Normally, we do not take, consider harmonics of up to beyond, say, uh, let's say, 21st order, roughly. That should give us most of the thing because the magnitude keeps reducing thereafter. And one more point is the supply system by no means is absolutely sine wave. It is distorted. But because the distortion, fortunately for us so far, is less than 3%, we assume that to be a reasonably good sine wave. So general power factor meter, what does it measure? Oh, that is based as it, there will be two types. If classical meters just it checks the voltage is as zero crossings between the voltage and the current. So if you have a distorted waveform which has multiple zero crossings, worst case, God forbid, for the current, you will run into absurd results in the classical power factor meters. But I believe the analog power factor meters, will, which were based on a dynamometer type of principle, will still give you some good reading compared to the electronic versions. I have not tested it out really. Um, the next question is, uh, in half wave control rectifier uh, with yes. RL load uh, at the time of calculation of average current, why XL or L are not taken into account? Is it all, it is always, uh, V, V not by R. I mean, here, I think, uh, V average by R. Uh, just uh, one once more. Uh, I'm not able to see that. Which number is that? I should yeah. be able to see. Is Mr. Uh, Amartya Rai? Uh, just let me see. I'm not getting it on that. I just wanted a slide. Chat. Chat. Okay. okay. Yes, I'm trying. But just can you uh, call it out in between? Yes. Yeah, I got it. In a half wave controlled rectifier with RL load, at the time of calculating our average current, 
why excel okay because you are calculating average current the answer is simple exactly. you are taking you are assuming that the current is average means it is a const, it is an equivalent constant current right that's the definition of average current so if you assume your current to be constant any fluctuation in the voltage is not going to change the power consumed there i believe that's the reason why excel is or l is not taken into account yeah. okay but right at the moment i have to think once more for this why excel is taken for calculation of average current i think so but maybe i can get back later on on this so maybe probably sir uh, i'll let yeah. me so no, say something that's okay because if you are considering average current there will be no voltage drop across the inductor so it will be exactly. zero. The average voltage drop across average voltage, the voltage the across the inductor is equal to zero will be zero that's why we need not to consider that yes yeah so the next question is if your bidirectional converter does not share any dc load at a particular condition mm -hmm. then the inductor should dump its energy to the filter why won't it cause a right. yes. build up absolutely correct that's why the control loop i skipped because of time involves a loop that monitors the capacitor voltage and takes a decision on the magnitude of input current if the capacitor voltage is trying to build up it should monitor it should control the input current magnitude not the phase the magnitude and bring down the magnitude such that no power flows in further okay so you have to realize if your power factor if the system is operating with unity displacement factor then the magnitude of the input current is directly proportional to the active power flowing in i repeat if your system is operating with unity displacement factor then the magnitude of the current controls the amount of power flowing in directly so you have to do a control there it is there in the slides but i skipped it quickly yeah sir uh, next question in fact <laughs> it is a little time taking sir can you please repeat the effect of adding shunt capacitor increasing actually current from the source without improving the power factor oh that is where why the harmonic currents are in increased yeah. Probably uh, there, there. Should I go back to the slide? Uh, I think, sir, if you see, this is the last question. Probably okay. yes. Okay, okay. I'll go back to the slide. Yeah, that is very interesting and not very well explained. All the textbook, all the the textbooks discuss about the resonance problem. Hardly anybody goes into the details of what is happening. Yeah, just one second will come. My laptop is a little slow. Okay, so here what I've done is this was my system as it is very simple elementary system with a sinusoidal voltage and the source reactance. This is my PCC point of common coupling. I have a rectifier, perhaps, which is a harmonic source. I have dealt it as a source, so it's sending current out. Because I cannot call it as a sink, then which is the source? Where is the harmonic coming from? It is not going to be generated from the sinusoidal source. And this is just a resistive load. Now I add a capacitor to it. This entire network now is comprising of superimposed waveforms of current, comprising fundamental as well as the harmonic and i am going to concentrate on the harmonic so i draw an equivalent circuit getting rid of the fundamental e equivalence from the superposition theory and i'm looking at the perhaps the nth harmonic perhaps let's say nth harmonic not the kth but the nth harmonic so i have some reactance n times here and this is the harmonic source nth harmonic and this is the capacitor reactance one by n omega c etc now if i redraw this i find that the l and the c are in parallel to each other l and c are in parallel because there is no more fundamental voltage in this superposition theorem circuit so they come in parallel and the rest are all in parallel now there is a chance that this l and c may form a resonant circuit at the kth harmonic if they form a resonant circuit at the kth harmonic you will understand there can be a large magnitude of current 
through either L or C, and that will be the circulating current within themselves, that current will not flow out of them. So individually, L and C can be having large current, as I've shown in red and black for the L and C. L current, remember, was designated as ISN. ISN means the current through L. So that magnitude can be large without affecting the other currents. If ISN is large, it means that your source current, harmonic content in the source current is large. So when you go back here, the source current becomes large. So what is entering into your point of common coupling is a large harmonic content from the source. It is not generated by itself. It is generated because of resonance condition. Resonance has created that current. It is not generated from the harmonic source. So the source current you see is much higher than the harmonic source. The harmonic source was drawing a magnitude IN and the source current is much larger than IN. There lie you will be able to distinguish. So don't get confused that part of harmonic current is increasing or harmonic current only is coming from the source. It's a resonant current which will be coming from the source. That can be very large. I think I have answered your question. I think so, sir. I, yeah, I, okay. I, sir. Yeah. There are, uh, one more question. Two more Please. questions are there. Uh, what What are the sources of uh, voltage harmonics? Voltage harmonic will be created only when you have a nonlinear load connected to the bus, not otherwise. In a real life situation or a synchronous machines are uh, generating pure sources. Is my slides visible? I'm not sure. Is it visible? Yes, Professor. They are visible. Okay. okay. So uh, if I go back, this is the situation. All our alternators create perfectly sinusoidal voltages. Our lines can have resistances, inductors, or capacitors, but they are all linear loads, and therefore they do not distort the voltage onto the bus. It is only when we start drawing non-sinusoidal currents that the bus voltage becomes distorted, not otherwise. So non-linear loads are mainly responsible for creating distorted voltages. So voltages don't get this are not created on their own. The currents are created by the nonlinear loads, and the distorted currents in turn creates the distorted voltage. Yes, please. Kindly explain how to eliminate harmonics using DSTATCOM DST with signal processing approach. Okay, DSTATCOM is basically to take care of your um, uh, var compensation that is for fundamentals only okay that is uh, that is why we call it as a d stat com but the power circuit is absolutely same so it is your control circuit only which makes a difference so even if i have a d stat com somewhere here this structure is absolutely the same as the structure here the only difference is the control the template so if the template is a fundamental current lagging the voltage by 90 degrees, it works as a stat static compensator or D statcom, D for standing for distribution level. But if the template contains a harmonic or a composite set of harmonics, then it is called as active power filter. In fact, today we are having some people building power quality, shunt connected power quality solutions, making a combination of both. That is, they are creating systems which have double effect. That means they are creating a certain amount of VAR compensations and a certain amount of harmonic compensation into the same power circuit. Theoretically, it is correct, but implementation is a bit difficult because once you are trying to compensate for harmonic, you need to switch at a higher frequency than the harmonic. So therefore, how good you are able to compensate the harmonic and simultaneously how good you are able to do the var compensation is a question of your that same thing that is a real time digital comp uh, computational tool is restricted to that and the switching frequency of the igbts so uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, yes, please. Today uh, we have done with all the questions, sir. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Professor uh, Sujit. I've taken a lot uh, of time from you. In you. fact, you know, uh, it is it is very evident from the feedback that what we are receiving. Uh, you know, our uh, participants have, in fact, very much uh, benefited and they enjoyed the uh, session right from the beginning. In fact, uh, they are, uh, they are expressing much. their thanks. To you, uh, I think uh, what I understood from the, some of them who already attended your talks earlier. 
so they are conveying okay. their regards to you uh, in okay. fact uh, of Thank course you. from the uh, uh, initial electronic society joint chapter bhuneshwar uh, and uh, we are also in fact very much delighted uh, and we convey our thanks so i request uh, dr tanmay uh, uh, to uh, please uh, convey the vote of thanks yeah uh, so, uh, thank you professor uh, so uh, basically so end at some time so uh, is our a uh, bit so uh, i saw surprisingly that uh, uh, the number of participants it was around 120 and it uh, was kept on going like this and it was not a uh, red until question uh, your voice is getting on. a little and, broken uh, you are having some network problem yeah. i think your voice is getting broken this is uh, uh, evening time uh, sir today uh, is evening time and yeah, yeah. we are having a new ipl match from afternoon <laughs> session everybody might have using the internet okay, connection okay okay right okay right right it is the okay. first day that okay. we are doing uh, please good good because yeah, internet uh, internet is, bandwidth is it, is will it, be problem is it audible please continue uh, please uh, yeah please turn on yeah okay uh, so uh, since our uh, webinar has come to the end and uh, we have got a very uh, a great uh, concern from the participants as well as the learned uh, fraternity like faculty members from uh, various uh, premier institutes as well as from uh, abroad also uh, it is our fortunate that professor bishwas was with us as well as uh, we have got so many uh, learned persons together and uh, uh, with this particular uh uh like uh, agenda i'm just sharing a little of this i trip uh memberships because uh, it is our foremost requirement to like uh, 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 uh publicize about i trip since we are organizing uh, this under the banner of i trip and uh, obviously uh, uh, the talk uh, which is uh, uh, for the observance of uh, like i trip day lecture so definitely i just each and every member would hear uh, the participants those who are uh, here and technical participants are there kindly do uh, uh, take a membership in ieee as well as uh, the society memberships are also available and uh, from uh, ie society that is industrial electronic society i do request uh, the participants to take the membership and uh, there are a lot many benefits you will be getting and uh, in due course we will be having some day if uh, professor biswas is uh, Uh, uh agreed up and then he can explain very well about the uh, benefits of i triple e uh, membership and so uh, so in some other day if sir agrees and sir, sir obviously sir it's very much busy with his uh, number of schedules and so uh, so if sir you are uh, available one day uh, we can organize uh, a special session yes. Uh, yes, to we can join this yes. thing yes. but my feeling Surely, is sir. that you have to club it with some other lecture because otherwise just for the benefits of it people i don't think many people will be willing to join so when uh, you have another webinar maybe before and at the end we can join. in fact uh, I, i have pleasure to invite you as a chair of industrial electronic society uh, in fact in, yeah. this is my here itself i am i am inviting you we are really uh, no we are uh, we wanted you to be there deliver another uh, talk in fact once the conductor tanmay completes i wanted to say this anyway it came to discussion okay. please uh, accept our invitation and whenever you okay, okay. please right. thank time, you very much thank you whenever yeah. you please the time of course uh, as a formal invitation i will send it to you so whenever you please uh, whenever you find the time uh, please uh, we we are ready to organize and uh, in fact we delighted you to organize much. your seminar thank you for your kind hospitality yeah, thank, thank you, you. and exactly as i said like uh, we will be organizing some of the parallel event also and uh, in between we will be uh, like uh, hosting this particular thing which is also very much uh, important for mobilizing this ieee membership and society memberships as well uh, so i'd like to uh, thank professor bishwas for his uh, valuable time spent with us and uh, sharing his knowledge uh, obviously and uh, the participants the uh, the feedback and all such things that we have got uh, through our uh, feedback form as well as uh, 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 through the chat box uh, we have got a lot many appreciations and the appreciation as the coordinators or the organizers also we are getting only because of you sir uh, since the uh, uh, presentation is very well organized organizers are being appreciated and obviously 
be it as a medium and uh, you are the uh, reason for appreciating so we would like to thank you for this uh, uh, noble gesture as well as uh, we should give our time to uh, like, uh, spend some time and it's part of a smaller time around the two uh, uh, hours and uh, 15 minutes you have spent with us as well as a number of learned persons uh, like uh, uh, women in engineering chair professor renu sharma is also with us and professor shubhrang shuranjan samantrai was the uh, with the uh, uh, secretary of uh, uh, bhuvneshwar sub section he was also with us and uh, professor choudhury from uh, south africa also uh, uh, was there and very interesting was there like uh, i think uh, one of your student was also there uh, as the uh, participants because uh, Uh, she has mentioned that uh, she has rejuvenated the uh, classes of J uh, jadavpur university after 40 years uh, <laughs> so it's a great opportunity for uh, all of us uh, so definitely i'd like to uh, thank all the participants uh, uh, student participants as well as my uh, colleagues out there uh, for this successful event and uh, really thankful for this uh, opportunity uh so Hi. professor branch uh, please uh, sorry uh, chandrashekar please uh, uh, thank you professor uh, sujit thank you very much for your valuable you. time and you know uh, even at this uh, you were the like the talk is very energetic and uh, you, uh, you have clarified mm -hmm. our uh, participants doubts and you know uh, the the best part i feel is that you know whatever you are saying that was supported with the, some mathematical analysis or graphical representation so uh, if time permits means very soon uh, we we would like to meet you in person and we'll definitely host you for some other session uh, so it's uh, my pleasure already shubhrangshu has asked me to go but because of covid i keep going to bhuvneshwar through bhuvneshwar to the sarang yeah. because of the governing body meetings uh, but you know the situation is a little different right now so thank you yeah. Uh, invitation so thank you all the participants uh, thank you professor uh, uh, so in the meantime uh, if uh, i think uh, professor renu sharma wants to say something uh, madam uh, do you like to say something yes sir thank you sir for such a informative webinar sir i was there in jadavpur university from 2004 to 2006 i have been oh, okay. uh, I'm, I'm, uh, From Jadavpur. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you. So, shall I take leave? Yeah, yeah, sure, sir, sure, sir. Okay. Thank, thank you, you very, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, participants. It was my pleasure. Absolutely, my pleasure. Yeah. When you people called me because there are multiple connections. which was right. my pleasure and incidentally i think uh, uh, because you are having a joint chapter industrial electronics i should be a member of that i'm not sure whether it will be so yes sir uh, yes sir. am i right because it's a joint yeah, yeah. chapter that's why yes sir, and yes, sir. incidentally yes sir i am a life member of the industrial electronics society this is unique i am not a life member of itp I am a life <laughs> member of Industrial Electronics Society because that society, some maybe twenty years back, gave a one-time option that you give certain payment, you become a life member. So I made that payment and become a life member. So I don't have to pay any fees whatsoever after that. As long as my IEEE membership is valid, I am still a member of that Industrial Electronics Society. Right, right. So probably you will be means uh, you might have got the invitation from E Notice also yesterday. Uh, so um, if it is uh, there, then definitely it is coming under. Because I saw uh, the affiliate comes okay, okay, okay. the session as well as the lecture sub session. Ha! Huh, because I didn't uh, really check for that. Because once you communicate to me, that is good enough. In fact, that is more co confirmatory than the mail because mails get lost in junk. Mails, do, I mean, you know, something or the other. You don't get time. You get fifty mails one after another. If I don't read the mail in time, it becomes hidden. Right, right, sir. right. Sir. Personal communication sure. is always more confirming. Thank you very right. much. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Have, have a good day have and day enjoy day. the IPL match. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. Right. Bye, sir. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Thank you.
Yeah. So there was some uh, questions regarding the participation certificate. So once you will uh, fill the feedback forms, the, uh, it will take around one or two days to discuss the certificates. So that will be generated and sent to your registered mail ID. So don't worry about it. Uh, so if you are not getting, uh, you have filled up the feedback form, but you have not got your certificate within uh, uh, three, four days, uh, just let us know about the uh, problem and we will uh, definitely help you in sorting out this issue. And at the same time, I'd like to request uh, all the- Yeah, Dr. Tanmay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just one second. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just one second. Uh, so all the participants are requested to join the uh, channels that we uh, I have uh, floated over there in your chat box. Uh, uh, so future communications regarding our uh, uh, chapter uh, like activities will be communicated to that. Yes, yeah, sir. Please. Uh -huh. Dr. Tanmay, I think uh, let us all office bearers meet once. We'll discuss uh, over. Yes, uh, yes. Okay. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. have some request from uh, Dr. Srikant Mahabhatra. I think he might be. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay, we'll we'll meet once and we'll uh, decide it. We'll discuss uh, over that matter. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. sure. Yeah. Sure. So thank you, thank you everybody. Bye bye. Thank you everybody. Yeah. Have a great. Day. So I think uh, I can end up the session here. Yeah, please, uh, Dr. Tanmay, you can do that. Yeah.